our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation here at the Palo Alto CUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here with special guest, the CUBE alumni, investor and entrepreneur, Mudu Sudakar. Mudu, good to see you again. John, Always a pleasure. You've been on as an entrepreneur, founder, as an investor. You're always out scouring the valley. We always have great conversations. I want to get your thoughts as kind of a guest analyst on this um, segment around the state of the union for enterprise tech. Yes. As you know, we cover enterprise tech. We go to all the top enterprise B2B events. The world is changing. We got reInvent coming up. We got VMworld before that. The two big shows to cap out this year. We got Splunk and a variety of other events as well. So a lot of action. Yes. Cloud now is pretty much a done deal. Everyone's validating it. Uh, Microsoft's gaining share. A lot of growth areas around cloud that's been enabled. I want to get your thoughts. First question is, what are the top growth sectors in the enterprise that you're seeing? Nice. Hey, first, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Over the years, you and me have done this so many times, I'm learning a lot from you, so thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, I think the, let's dig into the cloud side and in general the market. So I think that there are three, four areas that I see a lot, that's happening a lot. Cloud is still growing a lot. It's 100% or more growth in the cloud, and we'll d talk details on what it is. The second area I see a lot is IT services, or cloud services. This includes service management, the areas that service now is in. There are still, service now AI is- AI ops, would that be in that AI too? ops in that category, AI service management. Gartner is coming with a new category called AI service management. So they're replacing the ITSM with AI driven. So that's growing at 100% as a category. Third is RPA. Uh, according to, again, the industry analysts, they have seen that it's growing at 65 to 70%. So these three areas are growing a lot. And the last one that I see a lot is user experience. Can you believe it? Slack is a 20 billion market cap company. So if you lend it out, it's the cloud, service management services, RPA, user experience companies, these are all the four areas I see a lot. They're taking the, all the oxygen. Rest everybody is like the breadcrumbs. Okay, and why do you think the growth in RPA is so high? Is it hype, is it real? What What is going on in RPA in your opinion? A again, the rumors I'm hearing out there is uh, some companies are already at a billion revenue run rate wise. That's a lot in RPA. So it's not really a, a uh, hype, there's real running. So the, if you look at below the RPA, what's happening is RPA companies are automating automation. The key for here is, if I can improve the user experience and also automate things, RPA started doing screen scraping, right, in the early days, uh, looking at any reservation, supply chain, any workflow automation. So every company is so complex now, somebody has to automate the workflow. How can you do this with less number of people, less number of resources, and improve the productivity? I mean, RPA is, you know, robotic process automation is what it stands for, but ultimately it's software automation. It is. I mean, it's software meets cloud, meets automation. It seems to be the big thing. That's also where AI can play a part. Your take on the AI market right now, obviously uh, cloud and AI are probably the two biggest, I think, categories people tend to talk about. Cloud and, and AI. AI is kind of the big kind of territories. RPA could fall under a little bit of both, but what, what's your take on AI? Yeah, so I think if you look at RPA, I actually call the traditional RPAs to be historical legacy vendors, and RPA companies are doing a good job to transform themselves to the next level, right? But RPA needs to have AI at its core. Right, it's no longer the screenscaping, the decision making, the workflow, understanding. So uh, there are new technologies called conversational RPA. There's actually a separate uh, market guide being created called conversational AI. Within AI, yeah. can I talk to you in a dialogue manner? Like mm -hmm. what you experience with Instagram, or what's using WhatsApp, uh, or dialogue flow, how can I make it a conversational RPAs? Is a new sector that's evolving it. But RPA companies have done a good job, they'll evolve too. Yeah. They're going to add AI and as a UiPath has, has great success, we've been covering them like a blanket um, on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Um, I, gotta, I gotta get your take on how this all comes into the next generation, modern era, because um, you know, we're both uh, been around the block, we've seen the waves of innovation. The modern era of cloud, certainly cloud 1.0, Amazon, now Microsoft, Azure Phone, Google, and everyone else, really it was DevOps. The DevOps movement, cloud native, amazing, created a lot of value, continues to do well, but now there's a big conversation around cloud 2.0. What is your definition of cloud 2.0? How do you see cloud 2.0 evolving? Uh, first of all, I like the name cloud 2.0. I think it's you authored yeah. it, it's going to continue as a trend. So look, cloud 2.0 is, uh, is, I don't know what it will be, but I can tell you what it should be and what it can have. Some of the things it should do in the cloud is, Cloud is still very much uh, run to human beings. A lot of DevOps people, a lot of human beings. The next generation 2.0 should have things done programmatically. I don't need tens of thousands of SREs and DevOps people. 
So back to your AI upside and everything, some of those things should become, cloud should become proactive. I don't want to wait until Amazon EC2 is down. If I'm paying Amazon this money, Amazon should be notifying me when my service is going to be down. The sub is through, they have provided CloudTrail, CloudWatch, et cetera, but they need to take it to a notch level with Amazon, Azure, or So PCP. making the experience of deploying, running, and building apps easy, scalable, obviously that's uh, scales yeah. with the cloud, but programmable, kind of brings in the RPA. I mean, making it, it workflow automation. Edge of the network is also an interesting, comes up a lot, like okay, how do you deal with networking? I mean, Amazon's done compute and storage and amazing well with cloud, and networking has been built in, I guess. To me, the trend with networking kicks in big, because now it's like, okay, if you have no perimeter, you have a surface area with IoT, there's nothing there. Yeah. The cloud 2.0 has to address real time, programmability, things like Kubernetes continues to rise. You're going to need to have services taken up and down automatically, no yes. humans. Yes. So that is, that's my key point. The key point for cloud today should be done without a human in the equation. Today it's still done with DevOps. If people are still using Terraform, a lot of scripting, a lot of manual. Can you automate that? That's one angle. The second angle I see in cloud 2.0 is if you step back and say what exactly the in intrinsic properties of cloud made is, it's the workflow, it's automation, but it's also able to do it proactively. So what I don't have today is, if I'm playing cloud vendors this much money, tell me what outages are happening. Don't wait until outage happens. Can you predict the outages? They have the capability to, it, yeah. may be, it should be probabilistically, it may not be 100%. Mm -hmm. So I want to know outage prediction, I want to know which services are going down, or notify the users. That will become a, a common denominator and services will be start providing. Even though you see small startups doing this, yeah. eventually they become features. All these companies, and they'll get absorbed by the, I call these aircraft carriers. You have Amazon, Azure, GCP, they're going to absorb all these AA ops to the point they provide that as a functionality. Yeah, so let's get to the consolidation in a second, but I want to get your thoughts on the, uh, on the cloud 2.0, because what you're really getting at is that there's a lot of white space opportunity coming in. So I got to ask you the startup question, as you look at, you're an investor, prolific investor in a lot of startups, also you're an entrepreneur yourself, what is the opportunities out there? Because we'll get into the big, uh, the big whales, Amazon, who are building and winning at scale, so barriers to entry are higher every day, even though it's open source is there. Right. Uh, Amazon's betting on open source big time. We had Tom, John Thompson talk about that. That was the success of Satya Nutella. And so, what are, what, if I'm an entrepreneur out there, what, what do I do? I mean, is there, is there any real territory that I could create a base camp on and make money? There's plenty. There's What's always so there's plenty of white spaces to create. Look, first of all, you have to look at what's catering. Look at what's happening. IBM is out of business and service management. CS sold itself to Broadcom. BMC is sold twice to private companies. They've, even the CEO got has left or whatever it is. Then you have HP sold itself to Microfocus. The only company that's left is ServiceNow. So in that area, you can create plenty of good opportunity. That's a big white and space. And ServiceNow just had a bad uh, quarter, so they're and not look, truly cloud going to native. Do well, eventually, uh, they're going to, but there's enough companies to go in that space. There are, there, that play, that space can support two to three opportunities. So I can see a publicly traded company in service now space. In next five years, my prediction is there'll be another company will go IPO in the service management space. Same thing is going to happen in RPA. RPA vendors won't get acquired. They'll create enough workflow automation. They become the next tip course of the world. I can see a next publicly traded company going to happen. In the IT operations, PageDuty is a public publicly traded company today. PagerDuty is doing really well. Watch Datadog, they're going to do a public next. So that area also, you see plenty of opportunity to create companies in AI ops. So this is again, back to the AI growth areas. Cloud, hard to compete on public cloud. Yes. The big guys are out there. There's the cloud enablers, the yes. people who don't have the cloud. So HP tried to do a cloud, HPE, they had to come out. Dell tried a cloud, couldn't do it. Um, SAP technically is out there with the cloud. They're trying to be multi-cloud. So you have a series of people who made it, and Oracle's still on the fence, they still technically got a cloud, but it's really more Oracle and Oracle, so they're kind of stuck in the middle between you know, cloud and enabler versus a cloud player. If you're not a cloud player, large enterprise, what is the strategy? Because you got HPE, IBM, Cisco, and Dell. So I think, look, first of all, you didn't include Salesforce in that. If I'm Salesforce, I want Salesforce to get into, they have a sales cloud, marketing cloud, commerce cloud, Mark is not doing anything in the area of IT cloud. They cannot go from 100 billion to half a trillion, a trillion market cap without IT. They have to embrace that. And that's a 100% growth area. Adobe will get into this game at some point. Adobe is already 150 billion market cap. Then that leaves with what is Cisco going to do? Cisco has been buying more security, software assets, but they don't want to be a public cloud company. They are hybrid cloud, but they have to figure out how can they become an arms dealer in this game and by owning different properties of cloud services. 
and that's going to happen. And IBM did a good job by acquiring Red Hat. So I think some players are already figuring out this, consolidation is happening, but they have to get in the game in cloud. They have to do other service management. They have to get into RPA. They have to get experience. See, none of these guys are experience driven. In this day and age, the new kid in the, who are joining the workforce, they care for Airbnb. They care for WeWork. They care yeah. for Uber. They care for Netflix. IT is not betting on this. So if I'm on the boardroom at Cisco, I'm not talking about experience. That's a problem to me. HP boardroom is not talking about that. See, that's what if I'm, I know Mark is on the board from Andreessen, but Mark is investing in all these Slack companies, then why is HP not doing it? Either HP should get a separate board member, yeah. or they should get somebody maybe, else. Why, he doesn't want to telegraph the moves maybe. I don't know, we could talk to Andreessen about that, but I want to get back to this experience thing because uh, experiences become the new expectation. Yes. That's been kind of a design principle kind of ethos. Okay, so let's take that to the next level. Younger generation, they're consuming Airbnb, they're using these services like their news in little chunks, we built a video service for that. So things are changing. What is IT's version of that? Is it a consumption, is it a product issue? So how does IT cater to these new experiences? What are some of those experiences? No, I think all of the above. I think IT first of all should cater it. Every property, every product should figure out how to offer to the consumers how they are consuming should offer to the businesses on the B2B, B2C. So the IT has to think through every product owner should start thinking about how my user should consume this and how should I offer new experiences and how they want to see this in a new way, uh, right? It's not in the same, uh, the same compute and networking, how can I deliver it proactively? How can I deliver it to a point where people can consume it and make automatic decisions? So the decision making, that's where the AI comes in. Don't wait for me to ask the question. Suggest, it's like Gmail autocomplete. Every feature should be thinking through probabilistically what can I do to improve the experience. That changes the product management uh, and that's where I'm looking at companies who are thinking like that to the next gen CRM, next gen security, but that has to happen at the product level. I was mentioning the people who didn't have clouds, HPE, IBM, Cisco, and Dell. You threw Salesforce in there. I kind of would think Salesforce, Salesforce is technically a cloud. They were cloud before cloud was even cloud. They built basically Oracle for the cloud. Uh, that became Salesforce. But you mentioned ServiceNow, Salesforce, you got Adobe, you got Workday. These are application clouds. So they're not public clouds per se. They got Amazon Web Services. You know, Adobe runs on AWS, right? A lot of other people do. Microsoft has their own cloud. Right. But they also have applications as well, Office 365. Mm -hmm. So what do some of these niche clouds, these application clouds have to do differently? Because if you think about Salesforce, I mean, you mentioned a good point, why isn't Salesforce doing more? I mean, people generally don't like Salesforce. I mean, they think that it's, it's more of a lock-in spec, less of a, wow, they've done really innovative things. I mean, I don't, people don't really tend to talk about Salesforce in the same breath as innovation. They talk about, well, we run Salesforce, we hate it, or we use it, and they never really break into these other markets. What's your take on them? No, I think Mark has done a good job through over the years acquiring very companies. It has to start from the top and the Mark and his management team should say, I want to get into a new space. He got into commerce cloud, he got into marketing. He has to now decide should he get into IT or not. Once he comes there, he will really take up because today um, sales, Salesforce is below the market cap compared to Adobe, right? If I am Salesforce, I need to go better on, should I go after service no industry? Should I go after entire IT services industry? Yes or not? But they have to make that decision. Same thing with Adobe. Adobe is not going to be a niche cloud. They will get into IT side. They're already doing the AI side and experience. So they're king of experience. They're king of what they do in the marketing side. They will expand to IT. Well, Adobe Same thing will just launched a platform. Yes. That's real, uh, under the former executive from IBM. Um, that's an interesting direction. They all have these platforms. Okay, so I got to get into the uh, Microsoft, Amazon, um, Google, the big clouds, and then everybody else. A lot of discussion around consolidation. A lot of people say that a recession's coming next year. I doubt that, but you know, who knows? You can, if the consolidation continues to happen, you can almost maybe predict that, but where do you see the consolidation? You got some growth areas as you laid out, cloud, IT services, RPA, experience-based software, like Slack, et cetera. Where's the consolidation happening? If the growth is happening there, where's the consolidation? So I think it's happening everywhere. Like I see a lot in cybersecurity. I mean, CrowdStrike already went public, you have Zscaler, there are a whole bunch of companies, so the next level of companies, you already saw Cisco bought Geo Security, uh, Palo Alto has been buying aggressively companies, so security is already going through a lot of consolidation. You have, you have not seen other people taking a bet in the IT services industry, you'll start seeing that. 
Um, you're already seeing that in the Kubernetes space, the game is pretty much over, right? Even VMware bought companies, even NetApp bought companies in, uh, in the Kubernetes. So I think consolidation is always going to happen. People are picking up the right time. Uh, it's happening across the board. It's a great time to be an entrepreneur, create a value, take companies public too. So it's like, I think it's, it cannot be any more better time. Look, to your point, whether the decision happens or not, nobody can predict. But oh. if you a chance now, it's the best time to raise money, build a company. Well, Madhu, I think the analysis, at least from my perspective, is looking at all the events we go to is, the same theme comes up over and over. Andy Jassy, the CEO of AWS, always talks about old guard and new guard. I think there's two sides of the streets developing, old way and a new way. And I think the modern architecture, the modern era of computer industry is coming, and it looks a lot different than it was. So I think the consolidation is happening on those companies that didn't make the right bets, either technically or business model wise, or they took on too much technical debt and could not convert over to the cloud world. Right. Or these really robust software environments. So I think consolidation is from just, just the passing of older, and, and I have a name for this era. So remember the first main, first main computing was called mainframe era. Then went with client server era. Then came the cloud. Cloud is 2006, now 13 years old. The new era will call, whatever the name, it will be something with AI and machine learning era, where things will be so automated, right? That's a, we have new area of computing. So that's, I would like to see, so that's a new trend. This will be another 10 year trend. So even yeah. though we go through a recession, and it's all 10 software. Years, it's all software, software, cloud AI, scale, cloud data. Scale, AI level. Yeah, it's interesting, and I think the opportunity for startups is to build new brands. These new brands could come out. Let's take uh, an example of a company that um, is, that's went after an old incumbent space, dying market share, not, not very attractive from a VC standpoint, uh, from a market space standpoint, Zoom. Huh. Zoom went after web conferencing, I know. and they took on WebEx. And $20 billion market cap. And they cap. did it with a very simple formula. Be fast, be cloud native, and go after that big market and just beat them on speed and simple Back value. to that experience. They gave you the greatest experience just on the web conferencing it. And better than Skype, better than WebEx, better than anybody else. And the market paid them with reward. Uh, thanks to Eric, he had a great yeah. vision. So and he's really very like focused, that. he used cloud scale. That's it. Took the, the value proposition of WebEx, yes. get rid of all that other stuff, and brought it simple to video conference. And that mantra is going to happen in the AI, applying to AI for IT service management, AI ops, AI customer service, AI customer support. So this is what entrepreneurs can do. They can target big markets. Go niche, de depth. And go directly at either a specific differentiation, whether it's experience or just a better mousetrap, in this case, could win. Right, and one more thing we didn't talk about is where entrepreneurs go after is the area of Remember, many of these apps are still enterprise apps. Nobody really focused on moving these enterprise apps to the cloud, right? All these cloud providers are still struggling with uh, saying, how can I move my workloads? Remember, only 10% workloads are in the cloud. 90% still on-prem. So somebody needs to figure out how to migrate these clouds to the cloud very seamlessly. The apps are going to be born in the cloud, cloud native apps. So how do you address to cloud native apps? So there's enough opportunity to go after enterprise applications, yeah. cloud native applications. So it's a yeah. I mean, I do buy the argument that there'll still be on-premises activity, but to your point, there'll be a, still a massive migration to the cloud, either sunsetting apps and being born in the cloud, or moving them over on-prem, off-prem. And there's, in all the directions, I keep telling the entrepreneur, follow the money. When there is thing you have to look for, is there a big market? Mm -hmm. Are people catering there? If people are dying and the old guard is there, to your point, Andy just said the new guard, new guard will happen. Yeah. And if you can bet on the new guard and new experience, market will reward you. Where is the money? Follow the money, where is it? Where do we follow? Show me where it is, tell me where it is. So I told you, always, <laughs> look, follow the cloud. Cloud is the big, I mean, if you're not making money in the cloud, for the cloud, you're a fool right now. If you're any company you're making, not making in the cloud, as a CEO or board member, you need to think through it. Second, automation. Whether you go RPA, IT automation, you have to make money on. Service management. Whether it's from customer service to support to operations, you got to take the cost out of it. If you are a CIO today and you are not making bets, that's the main thing I see is most CIOs are still don't want to take a bet. They want to build an empire. The message to CIOs right now is either you do it or get out. Give the job to somebody else. Well, I polled a lot of CISOs in pre preparing for, re for Amazon's new security cloud security conference and overwhelmingly response from the CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers, right. is we are building stacks internally. When I asked him about multi-cloud, you know what they said? Multi-cloud is BS. I said, why? He goes, well, we have a secondary cloud, but I don't want to fork my development team. I want to keep my keep people focused on one cloud. If it's Amazon, we go Amazon. If it's Azure, we stay with Azure. I don't want to have three development teams. Right. So there's a trend to keep the stack building internally. So that means they're investing yeah. in building their own tech stacks. Right. 
Your thoughts on that? Sure. Look, I mean, that's again, there's no one size fits all. There will be some CEOs who will want to have three different silos. Some people have a horizontal stack. Like I've seen companies right now, they write the code once, it compiles and executes in all three clouds. That's a new way to build it. You're not going to create a stack for each of them. You have to write the code so that it uses the native services, but uses the same code base. That's how the new startups are building it. If somebody's writing it like this, that's the old way of thinking as a CIO. So as I said, the new CIOs have to think through how can I do one code works on all clouds. Great. Boudou, thank you for coming on again. Always great to get your commentary. I learned a lot from you as well, appreciate it. I got to ask the final question. As you go around the VC circles, you don't need to mention any names. You can if you want, but I, I want to get a, a, a taste of the market size of rounds. Seed round A and B, what are hot rounds? What sizes of series A? I'm seeing more you know, 10 million, 15 million series A. Um, series Bs are always harder to get than series A seeds always kind of easier. What's your t take on the hot rounds that are hot right now and what's the sizes of the investments? I, I, yeah, very good question. So I mean, so seed is the most easy one, right? Your concept, but the seed size has went up from 200K to now, most seed rounds are a million, two million, most seed. Series A has now went to $10 million. So if you're a Series A company, you're not getting 10 to 15, there's something wrong. Because that became the norm. Because the, there's more easy money. It also helps the entrepreneurs. You don't have to look for money. Series Bs are becoming $20, $25, twenty-five million million rounds. Series Cs, if you don't raise a $50 million round, then that means you're really not a growth company. So the minimum amount to draw is $50 million in Series C. Then after that, you're really looking for expansion, $100 million, et cetera. Yeah, private equity or you know, secondary that. market. But the key is the market valuations also went up. So I tell the entrepreneurs, you, when there is an opportunity, if you have something, you can command a price. So if you are doing a Series B at $25 million, you should be commanding $100 million, $150 million, $200 million valuations, right? If you are not, other guys are getting that. You are giving too much of your company. So you need to think through all of that. So Series B is at $100 million? Oh, Pre good companies are much higher than that. There will be 150, 200, and again, this is a buyer's market, the entrepreneur's market. So yeah. VCs have more money in the cash, if good players, they will put in, whether you have one million revenue or five million revenue, 10 million, Series B is the most hardest, but it's commanding good premium. Good time to be an entrepreneur. It's always bubble always bursts when it's a buyer's <laughs> market on the entrepreneur's Take side. Take the money, cash but is always king. start a company when the market busts. Yes. That's always my philosophy. Mudu, thanks for uh, coming on, appreciate your insight. Always, as usual, great stuff. Thank you, John, always. Mudu, Sudhakar here on theCUBE, investor, friend of theCUBE, entrepreneur. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Thank you, John.